What's up, everyone? I'm going to go through on how to make one of my favorite uh, Christmas holiday time drinks. <clears throat> and it's a really simple recipe, and it comes out wonderful. Now, this is, I use some of these spices in here, and uh, if you don't have, if you don't want to use them, you don't have to, and it still has a pretty good flavor. And I'm going to tell you how to do it carbonated and not carbonated. But let's run through the, the ingredients we're going to be using today. So the apple juice I use is this Great Value brand. And it's a cheap apple juice because it's 100% uh, made from apples. There's no preservatives in it. You want something with no preservatives. Um, it ferments better. It, the yeast doesn't have to fight that preservative. Okay. And I'm making one gallon. And so I'm going to use three quarts of it right there. And so it's four quarts to a gallon. Three quarts. You need to leave a little room for air and your other ingredients. I'm going to use a yeast nutrition. And that just helps the yeast get going really, really good. It just provides a little faster ferment. I'm going to use one cup of sugar. I'm going to use this mulling spice. Let me get that in there. That mulling spice is from the Spice Trading Company. And the only thing you have to watch for when you get it from them is just smell it. Make sure it smells right. It should smell like wassail. This makes a hard apple cider or a hard wassail. It's really it's going to have a, when you use the mulling spice, that has a wassail flavor. If you um, don't use the mulling spice, then it's a hard apple cider. But I love that flavor. Oh, it makes it so nice. And there's my yeast pack that I that I, I prefer to use. D47. This is a 14% alcohol. It usually doesn't get that high. This drink is usually somewhere between 10 to 12. It's going to take about 7 days to finish out. And I use one pack. The yeast is so important. It's one of the most important things on this whole process. This yeast retains the fruit flavor of the apple. Some yeast uh, will devour a lot of your flavor off. So if you don't get the right yeast, it, it makes a huge difference. I've made it with uh, several different yeasts to try to get the recipe right. And this is the most flavorful one, retaining the most apple flavor. And then I have a jar. I like wooden spoons. This is to mix the sugar into the apple juice. This one is to measure the yeast nutrition. So, I'll show you how I do it as I do it. But I use all wood. This comes from the uh, comes from underground. Uh, Earth Underground, I believe what the store's called. Really nice measuring spoon. And then a little thermometer, a little digital thermometer. And then something to uh, start the yeast in. Everything has been sanitized in the dishwasher, and so it's good to go. And that's how I suggest using it. I use this one-gallon jug, which I just buy one-gallon jugs. Then I drill a hole into the ends. Then I get these little rubber gaskets off of Amazon, and I get the bubbler. And that's really it to it. And that's all you really have to do. As you can see, it coming through that side right there. The next step we're going to do is we're going to actually start on the yeast because the yeast takes time to rise. And so we're going to take our cup here and we're going to take our apple juice. And we just want to, to fill it up about right here. Now, you need to get this about, you need to put about that much into it. And you need to get it to around. 105 degrees that's ideal ideal temp 105 degrees and so I don't believe I'm quite there that apple juice is a little warm I'll, I'll put it in a pot of hot water so let's see what it is right now and I might look at I might have it still hot enough
needed just a little warmer for the yeast to activate. So what you can do is you can put it into the microwave for about 20 seconds or so. And that should that should raise the temp up. Alright, so we got a little warmer. As you can see, we got it at uh, 112 degrees from the microwave. That was 20 seconds. But that, that's okay because we need to mix in that yeast nutrition now. So we're going to use a, a teaspoon, which is the smaller ends, and we'll use a tablespoon for the whole for the whole jug. So, and that'll take down some of the temperature because it's a little cold. And long and honestly, if you have it hotter than 105, that's fine. You just don't want it more than 125. Okay, get that mixed in, and as we can see. We're probably 110 degrees. That's fine. Now, you want to make sure you, you do this so you can keep it in a cool spot. If you ferment more than 75 degrees, it's going to taste bad. You have to keep it lower than, than 75 degrees when you're fermenting this um, beverage. So 110, that's, that's just right about on spot. So we'll mix that in. And we're going to let that do its job. It usually it doesn't take very long. We'll see it rise. It's stirred up real good. And some people have different ideas about it. And others who doesn't really matter. This is a clean towel I have down here to do all this on. Move it off the side. I can smell it already going. Okay, there we are. So we know the apple juice is around 90 degrees, so we're going to start prepping that. So we'll move this off to the side so we can still kind of see it, and we'll get this going. And so what we want to do first is to put in a little bit of apple juice. To dissolve the sugar. Now you need your apple juice a little bit warm, like I said, around 90 degrees. You don't want it much warmer than that. Because you don't want to shock your yeast with cold juice. And you need something to dissolve your sugar. Now one cup of sugar for three quarts of apple juice will give you about 28 to 30 bricks. And that's going to produce about 12% alcohol in your hard apple cider. Let's make a nice strong apple cider. Because a lot of them you buy from the store, they're only 6%. We're going to make us a nice one. Make sure everything is good to go. Okay. We're going to pour in the rest of our apple juice. You can see that all our sugar has now been dissolved. And remember, you have to have room for air. Have to have room for air. We're going to add in our yeast nutrition. Do not add too much of this. Your stuff will boil over. A little bit of this goes a long ways. And it's per thing you make. Some things you have to add more. Some things you need to add less. This, this right here, you almost don't have to add any. But if you do add some, it will be done in one week. And that's all you need. So we're going to stir that up like that so it's not all clumpy up, clumped up. Nice and mixed up. All right. I'm going to show you guys. You take a look at this. That is already starting to rise up. See how it's formed that white on top? It's already starting to form the gases. We're going to let, just keep letting it go. This is when you add, you add your mono spice right away. You don't do it at the end. This is a one... One batch. You do everything you need to do to it this this minute. So it comes like a little bag. Now I can use this mulling spice pack up to three times. I'll show you the name of it again.
Got it from the, the Lost Trading Company. What is that? The, the Spice Tea Exchange? That's what it is. The Spice Tea Exchange. I thought it was called the Lost Trading Company. Well, who knows? Pour all that in. And you really don't have to stir that. A lot of it will just float. And that is your season now. If you don't like the taste of wassail, which I do. I love the taste of wassail. My family's from the north. Um, this will give you that flavor. But if you just want hard apple cider, leave it out. I think it's a thousand times better with this. People love it. People who don't like wassail still like this. Well, I think people just don't try it. So the yeast is starting to rise and you can kind of see it right there. Starting to build up a bigger and bigger head on it as you can see going up the sides a little. Um, we got about a quarter of an inch rise. If the yeast does not start to rise, after 30 minutes, throw it out, figure out what you did wrong. Do not add it to your, your main product. That's why we do the yeast separately, just in case there's something wrong with the yeast. We do not want it. We don't want to put bad yeast into our main mix because, you know, you don't want to ruin the whole thing. And I'm going to fill the bubbler up when I get done with this water. Now, I want to talk about, we. I've done this a lot of different ways. I've used yeast that are 18 to 20% alcohol content. That'll make that. It ferments too quick and it has a really bad flavor. And you lose almost all the apple flavor because it's just... Those, those yeast are made for, um, like whiskeys and stuff like that. You really need to get a wine yeast or even a beer yeast, something like that. I, wine has done the best for these fruit flavors for whatever reason, because I think wine yeast is made to ferment, um, fruit and it's just, um, evolved more for that use. I have tried to use honey instead of, uh, sugar. And it gives it a mead taste. If you'd like mead, that's, uh, use your honey instead of your sugar. Use 8 ounces of honey instead of 8 ounces of sugar. Sometimes you have to use 12 because sugar, uh, honey is harder to ferment than sugar is. So, so sometimes you have to add more honey to get the same desired result. Uh, sugar ferments really easy. And it has a very neutral flavor. So it's a good thing to use if you want to have a neutral flavor and you want the apple to stand out. Um, it will cause the, the apple and the fruit flavors of everything just to be more pronounced. <sighs> All right. So the yeast is pretty much ready. It's been about 30 minutes. You see how big the bubbles are? That, that is a great indication. Now, if your yeast rose all the way up to like right here or something, there, there's an issue. You want a slow yeast. You want something that's not going to just consume everything because you want the flavors in there. You want to be real careful. But you see how big those bubbles are? That shows you that that yeast is really well activated. You can see how good that looks. So we want to go ahead and add that to our mixture now. And so just pour it in. And don't worry about if there's stuff on the sides. Sometimes you can swirl around just lightly like that. Try to get a little bit off the sides. But for the most part, just kind of pour it in like that. Just kind of mix it around. Okay. If there's still stuff in there, don't worry about it. It's not a big issue. Take your bubbler and you want to go ahead and fill it up before you put it on your thing. With the way these bubblers work, let's move this back so you can kind of see what I'm looking at, right? And always use, always use like bottled water. It, it just makes it better. You just want to kind of pour it in there, kind of slow. And you would just want to fill it up halfway. Let it kind of equal out. And just a tad bit more. Okay, that's perfect. That That's all you really need. And you're just going to put your top back in your bubbler. Just like that. And screw it on. I don't like to fill my bubbler on top of um, what I'm doing because if I overfill it, then it auto siphons into it just because the natural siphoning action. And, and just put it in a nice spot that's around 65 to 70 degrees, and that should be in the inside of your house. This time of the year, it's perfect. If it gets too cold, then it 
really ferment slowly. If it gets too hot, it tastes really bad. So it's just really important to keep it in a good environment. And that's really all you have to do. And uh, I'll show the progress in the next one at how I actually bottle it. And um, I have some preservatives to uh, stop the fermentation so that way it doesn't over carbonize. And this will be carbonated. Uh, if you don't want it carbonated, you just go for two weeks. You ferment for two weeks. It will be done fermenting in one week. And the second week, it'll run flat naturally on its own. You don't have to do anything else special. As you can see, let me show you this. That way you can kind of see a little bit. Do you see how it, it's already starting to push that bubble down? And that other one is rising on the other side. That one's rising right here. And this one's going down. And you can see it's already, that's how much carbonation we're creating. And so it, it, it goes pretty quick on its own. And so there's no reason to have a super, super fast yeast. You don't need a turbo yeast or anything like that. You want something that's going to create a nice slow ferment, something that's going to leave the flavors, and you're going to have a nice, nice apple cider wassail flavor drink, depending on how you want to do it. Now, we'll say if you do want to serve this hot, because it is good hot, then you'll need to let it run flat. I have taken the carbonated one and um, heated it up so that way people can have it warm, but it's still not near as good if you let it go flat and have a nice warm, hard drink. It really makes a nice toddy on those cold evenings. I appreciate you guys so much. Uh, just like and subscribe. And if you want to see more videos on, on some of my recipes for making really nice uh, drinks, I, I, I make all kinds. And I think I'm going to start a series on it. Um, I appreciate y'all so much. Thank you.